So the question that I have is, I have a long-term vision of what I am creating, but I get sidestepped on a daily basis with the short term. I don't really feel like doing this particular step right now. I don't really feel like doing this particular thing today. I don't <laughs> what on multiple subjects. Is that a bad thing or a good yeah, thing? Yeah. It well, <laughs> I I want to be really sleek and toned and in shape, but I just seem to never feel like working out today and it's always today. <laughs> Or I want this for one particular company to build it to a hundred million dollar company, but I don't ever feel like doing the email marketing campaign today, and it's always today. It, I just have been a little bit stuck. In but that. the question that we have is, what do you feel like doing? Are you feeling like doing something? <laughs> so it varies. So some days, yes, and I'm living a really good life, but some days, no, I don't feel like doing anything. We've been saying a lot recently. Mm -hmm. The last several gatherings we've been really emphasizing that we would encourage that everyone do 30% less 40% less we've been encouraged that people do 50% less 60% we've been encouraging that people do about 70% less 75% less of what they have been doing and more contemplating more visualizing more taking pleasure from life more vibrational work less action work and so that's part of what's happening to you is that you're beginning to understand where your true leverage is mm -hmm. and it's a hard adjustment because you know from past experience from watching yourself and watching others that when you really apply yourself that you can make some things happen mm -hmm. but when you're talking about things of this magnitude when you're talking about that sort of leverage now you've got to tap into a vibrational leverage some years ago Jerry read a book many 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 years ago Alan Lakin had written it and it was a self-help book and it was called how to get control of your time in life and the only thing that Jerry recalled from the book that he then talked to Esther about was a process called the Swiss cheese process and what the basis of it was was that there are some things that you can accomplish very quickly. It only takes a minute or 10 minutes or maybe even an hour. So if it's on your list today, you can get it done. If you apply yourself, you can use things like willpower and diligence and determination to make yourself do those things. And you can get a reasonable number of those done. But there are those larger things like writing a book or getting yourself in shape or creating a financial empire or even doing your income taxes or cleaning out your garage in other words those things that you're not going to do in an hour that would take maybe more than a day or maybe more than a week and so those are the things that you tend to not apply yourself at you procrastinate you don't make any effort and so he suggested that you take those big things and you break them down into smaller things so Esther takes a big piece of paper and she puts holes all over it making it look like Swiss cheese and then writes all of the different aspects of everything about this project what's it going to take to do all of this and then when she looks at it she just picks one of those and asks herself if she feels like doing it and something that she has discovered is that she often does feel like doing it she often feels like doing it because the overwhelmment factor isn't there and the rational factor that says I'm not gonna be able to begin to accomplish this all right now you kept saying right now right here right now right here right now but a piece of it may be but here's the thing this is the piece that we want to put into this is there anything on this Swiss cheese list that I want to do right now not that I need to do right now is there any piece of this that I'm called to and what Esther's discovered is yeah she keeps feeling called to that and called to that and sometimes she'll sit and she'll complete three or four things in one day as she's moving about because she wants to do it not because she needs to do it and that really is the key It's another way to overcome resistance it's sort of like the placemat process that we talked about before where in a feeling of overwhelmment delegating it to the universe don't assign it to yourself so did anything shift in that conversation it did it did just the feeling of because everything that i feel like i must do next for this one particular company lesson stop is i don't want to do 
But I'm certain that if I lay it out in a map the way that you suggested, there will be things. So what's this conversation saying? Always follow your path of least resistance. Let's take this further. We've not had this conversation before with anyone. Let's take this further. Why take the path of least resistance? Because it's the only choice you have. And here's the big piece. Your inner being knows what is the path of least resistance. So you've got to give yourself permission to take that path of least resistance. And most of you don't want to do that because then you define yourself as lazy or inappropriate or unfocused or unwilling. And that's just not the case. Let's say it in this way. Path of least resistance is the way the entire universe operates. Path of least resistance is the only way that things operate in a natural way. Path of least resistance is the only way, the only sustainable way for energy to flow. Mm -hmm. Path of least resistance is a good thing because path of least resistance and path of most allowance are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Path of least resistance is a good thing. So am I inappropriate that I don't feel like doing all of those things? Certainly not. There's resistance that's keeping me from wanting to do them. And so it's releasing that resistance that is necessary right now. Mm -hmm. You're going to have fun with that. You think we got to the bottom of it? Of that, yes. What else? Relationships. So I met a really wonderful man. I date wonderful, amazing men. And he's in Boulder. I live there part-time. And we were communicating through for six weeks before we met in person. Um, we met through mutual friends. And we were so excited to meet each other. And then it was off when we met each other in person in a really weird way. And so I just kept pulling back and remembering all the things that I really like about him. But um, all of a sudden he's like, I'm just terrified of having a girlfriend. I'm like, well, you could have mentioned that. But so I've just been really chill about it in general and, and I'm letting it unfold. And I am using it in a different way than I've ever used a relationship before. So let's apply mm -hmm. this path of least resistance, Swiss mm -hmm. cheese to yeah. this. Okay. I like it. Because there are things about it. In other words, what's different about the communication that you were having before you met. He said it just wasn't real to him, so he could just be in his mind about this perfect relationship, and then all of the fears that he has around relationships came up, that it would be really hard work and all of this stuff. And I'm like, my relationships actually aren't like that. But he can't hear that, and I don't want to try and convince him of anything. So let's just say, because it is true, mm -hmm. that it isn't that at a distance you looked better and up close you didn't look so good in physical ways or in personality ways. It's not that. Let's just say that at a distance you didn't look so real and up close you looked real. Let's just say that at a distance it felt more free and up close it felt less free. So... It isn't about inappropriateness. It's more about readiness and readiness is about path of least resistance. So the question that we have for you is, is this a project worth completing? I actually just last night was saying to my best girlfriend, I don't need another project, but I'm being open. I'm but being isn't open. everything really a project? <laughs> In other words, we're not talking about you fixing him or making, we're talking about you finding the unconditioned in it enough, not needing his response to be a certain thing in order for you to feel good, being able to continue to focus upon the positive aspects and hold yourself in that place of alignment. Because when you do that, that takes a condition out of it, the very condition that is frightening him. Yes. Because there isn't anything more uncomfortable for someone who's been free wielding than to believe that they have to change their behavior in order to accommodate someone else. And yet when you come together in sort of a cooperative dance, there is a compatibility that is important. Do you believe that you discovered compatibility on most subjects before you met? Yeah. And so can you feel that it isn't about lack of compatibility? Mm -hmm. It's more about lack of readiness. And lack of readiness is about alignment only, you see. If we were standing in your physical shoes and we had discovered an object of attention that makes our heart sing on most fronts, mm -hmm. we would focus on the heart singing, not the situation that is making it sing. Right. And when you do that, it'll either fall into place or something else will. It will either fall into place or something else will. And it's true of everything. Esther's had this experience a lot. Have you ever purchased what appeared to be the perfect piece of furniture for a place? 
and then you found something else to go there that was perfect but then they weren't perfect together so the perfect piece of furniture is no longer perfect but the rug that you put down is so now the piece of furniture has to go as your life continues to evolve your criteria changes and your desires change and what you're asking for changes and it's always going to be like that so you're not looking for the perfect anything you're just looking for the most situations that you can feel the best about but when you decide to be unconditional then you put all the conditions aside and you just decide how you want to feel and you start focusing on that and then things just start syncing up with those feelings because your inner being the source within you knows everything that will surprise and delight you to the furthest extent that you have currently decided it's so much fun when you relax and stop trying so hard to be a deliberate creator and accept that you are already that and that things are unfolding perfectly for you and that your work is just to stay as happy in the project process project process project process project process as you can in any moment in time you're not ever going to back off because your desire for more from that broader perspective has so much momentum yeah I have one more quick question correlating that because with this relationship, I've done something that I've never done before. I took about a year, year and a half off of dating entirely and just realized that I am freaking awesome and whatever guy ends up with me literally is like the luckiest guy on planet earth. So it is okay with me whether or not that sorts out. And so I've been being really chill and just watching what happens and only sending messages when I feel really, really good and really in alignment. And then I'm wanting to take that practice and put it into like sales for my new company, which feels far more significant and important than the relationship because the relationship sort of feels handled and it's harder for me to do that like you were talking about with the other people because it does feel more serious so how do I translate that well there's it's a little vibrational <laughs> contradiction okay. in what you just said and what you were saying earlier okay. in the sense that your relationship doesn't feel handled Oh, okay. Does it? Well, it feels like the right one is coming for sure, for sure, for sure. And it's either him or it's someone else, for sure. So do you believe that relative to the relationship, contrary to the conversation we just had, mm -hmm. that you are in an unconditional place about it? That you know how you want the relationship to feel and that you feel the ease of patience of just waiting for it to come <laughs> into place? More so than I ever have before because of this relationship that just happened not prior to it because of going through this and having to just remind myself that I get to run the show it is the way that I want it to be I don't have to bend around to something different so you don't have to bend around to something different in terms of compromising or changing but you do have to bend around isn't the word that we want to use you do have to find constant steady alignment with who you really are and how you really feel so give us five non conditions relative to relationship so we're looking for emotional words my relationship is yes my relationship is flow ease home sensual steady all right now give us five relative to business exhilaration exploring we think they're the same mm -hmm. in terms of flow flow and yeah. steady yes but with the business you have higher anticipation about it you're a little more sure-footed about it so the word exhilaration didn't come up in the relationship but it did come up in the business so go a little further with exhilaration relative to the business in emotional terms in emotional terms I'm just creating something that is brand new that has never been done before all right now it's exhilarating apply that to relationship yeah, the type of relationships that I create are different. They're really good feeling and flowing. Something and that has never been before, something that is unique to who we are, mm -hmm. something that is unexpected, maybe. You see what we're getting at? But the feeling of flow, we like that word flow, and we like the word ease, and we like the word clarity, and they are all almost identical vibrational properties. Ease, flow, and clarity are what alignment really are all about because when you're in sync like that that's how it feels it's the absence of struggle if you like this video don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next